Good morning, everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening vlog. All right, what do we have for you this weekend? All right, for our vlog this weekend, we have utilizing material effects in wood. What are the effects in wood? How do we use them to make a piece stand out? Are these effects difficult to work with? How will I determine what species to use and for what project? Is the species I'm looking to work with even available in my area? If not, then where can I go find it or purchase it? And uh, you know, these are all these are all questions that, that I was asking here not too long ago when I decided to undertake uh, some of the certain niche items that we fabricate up here. Okay. Now, some of the materials that I speak of, uh, we'll start with, say, demographics. I am surrounded by maples, uh, beech and birch up here in the far upper northeast. However, what I'm exposed to, others may not have in other parts of the country. Okay? Chances are you're not going to find cypress growing in New England any more than you're going to find an 80-foot sugar maple in the swamps of uh, Florida. Any more than you're going to find that cypress tree growing in the redwoods of Northern California. Okay? So, this is what I mean by demographics. What species is available for you and where? Okay? Now, as far as the, uh, as far as the effects go in the material, we're going to cover some of the basic ones. Now, there's plenty of them, but to keep the video down and obviously keep things up, uh, Within a, within a time constraint. We're going to go over the, the basics. Okay, first of all is spalting. You hear me talk about spalting up here all the time. Uh, matter of fact, there's a piece we're working on right now that incorporates some nice forage spalted legs. Spalting is the process where uh, dead or decomposing or starting to, uh, to decompose material starts to rot. Uh, fungus inhibits the material, and depending upon the material, the fungal strain, the climate, some of the environmental effects that go into play, it will determine the different colors that you can get. I've, I've personally had greens, red, orange, and yellow. Uh, white, black, and browns are some of my more uh, commons, like in this, this uh, table leg that we've got right here. Okay? We can also see that there's some spalting on this queen size headboard behind me. The spalting in the softwood, though, is, uh, is generally blue and pine, so we have a nice spalted effect in the water below, but yet we've also got some nice grayish blue spalting to kind of simulate clouds across the top. These are the effects that we're talking about taking advantage of. The other item that we can mention real quick are burls. Uh, I know as an engraver, I don't use a lot of this stuff, uh, every now and then I'm lucky to get my hands on somebody who has cut them into chunks. A burl to me is a, uh, it's a tumorous growth on a tree. This is off of a cherry tree. These are all over the cherry trees up here. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not a biologist. I'm a wood engraver. But it's nothing more than a wood grain growing in a deformed manner. It can be caused by stress, injury, fungus, or a virus. I told you before that when I go out to forage, I generally never have a problem when I'm looking to go out and get down material. These have to be cut out of generally live trees. Eventually, I think these will get big enough to kill them, but you've still got to cut a tree down, and if it's not on your property, well, that's a conversation for you to have with a property landowner. Spalting and burls. Those are two really, really pretty cool effects, in my opinion, in material. Another one, and this is something that I've seen in a lot of maple, uh, it's an effect called bird's eye. It's common in hardwood maple. Uh, I, like I said, I have seen it in a lot of maple, but I think myrtle wood, and there's a few other species out there that does offer bird's eye. And that's what it looks like. It looks like small little patterns of bird's eye in the wood itself. It's a phenomenon. Some researchers are stumped. They're not completely 100% sure how bird's eyes form in the, in the wood itself. Another beautiful effect 
in Maple again is I've never heard it called uh, Ripple Maple. I've always referred to it as Curly Maple. Uh, but Tiger Maple, Flame Maple, it's basically where the figure of the grain has an effect in it that looks like a tiger stripe on a physical tiger. It's really, really nice. I can mention real quick, my grandmother had a piece of furniture years back that was curly maple. Uh, a little hutch or something. I don't remember exactly what, but very beautiful piece. And uh, they, they do look very nice. A uh, little piece of history. Uh, it was also used by Gibson Les Paul back in the 60s. They made a lot of nice electric guitars out of uh, curly maple, tiger maple. And it was also the first word of choice uh, when they were making the Kentucky Rifles years, 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 and years ago. I don't believe that there's any one species of tree that's going to be completely inept from a knot. I believe that all trees have the capabilities of having knots in them, whether it's great big ones or, or little small ones or whatever. I believe all trees are capable of, of having knots. Now, there are, as a matter of fact, different types of knots. I'll tell you what they are real quick. I'll leave it up to you to read the description on them, though. There are closed knots. There are open knots. There are loose or unsound knots. Then there are sound knots. There's a pin knot. And then there's what's known as a knot cluster. Knot clusters in some species of wood, <coughs> excuse me, are also referred to as a cat paw. <laughs> One of my other favorite things that I enjoy working with up here is live edge. This is live edge material. You don't end up squaring it off dimensionally. You leave it all crazy. We do bar tops like that up here. We do these headboards. It's, it's nice and unique. I like working with it because it, it does. It takes a few steps out. You're not squaring the material up. Uh, to me, though, it's more reminiscent in a, in a cabin or a, a cottage or a a rustic style dwelling because it is. It's, it's rustic furnishing. But live edge is another wonderful effect. Whether you decide to leave the bark off or on, live edge is a nice way to go for a rustic presentation. Okay, wormholes, grub holes, and insects. I don't personally have a piece of material here. If you've ever pulled a, a limb or something out of maybe something that's been submerged in a, a lake or a pond for a while, you brush the silt off it, you can see all these little holes through it. Well, same thing will apply to insects or, or anything of that nature. They can go in and, and they can channel in holes and pockets and they can add some really, really cool effects uh, to material. So look for your wormholes, your grub holes, and any damage that's been done by insects like termites, all right? <clears throat> Natural environmental effects and factors. Now, <laughs> what I mean by that, I have, I have literally cut open different trees of the same species up here, cut from two different locations, and I think it's due to the soil composition and maybe all the heavy minerals or the lack thereof that some of the species are getting. Well, it caused a staining in the wood, black specks, Really, really unique stuff. But like I said, I could cut a maple tree on my own lawn or off my own property. I can run over to my buddy's house, 10 minutes away, cut that exact same maple. And because his soil and his, his minerals in his soil are different than what maybe I have here, he's going to end up with, with different natural environmental effects like that. Another one is uh, that I like to do in the spring is I like to go around is... Uh, the lakes and the ponds, and I look for anything that has now been uh, maybe knocked off a beaver dam. Don't go out and disturb them. I don't believe that's legal, but if they wash off and they float to shore, well, by God, they're fair game in my book. So Mr. Beaver is going to have to go gnaw of the tree, but beaver wood, uh, anything that's been floating in the water, the bark has come off of it. It's really smooth. The sun has maybe bleached it. That adds a, another type of environmental uh, effect to the material itself, all right? All right, and I think that about does it, but the reason we wanted to talk about the effects in the material uh, was because of a job that we've been working on. We wrote last weekend's blog on it. <coughs> a gentleman was kind enough to chime in and 
I probably didn't explain myself good enough, so we'll do it right now. And then what we'll do is we'll take it down to uh, we'll take it down to the home office and we'll get the screen capture up and we'll show you real quick in a video. This is the cribbage table that we just fabricated. I just painted it, and I told you in the beginning, the intro to the cribbage table layout and design, we had it all glued and clamped right here. I told you there were three holes in it. Three big knot holes. Uh, one was here, one was here, and then the other one you can clearly see right there. I didn't know what engraving I was going to put in at the time. We also did a how to repair your knot holes on your machine. A gentleman chimed in, he was absolutely correct. Steve, why even go through all that in the first place? He was absolutely right. I wasn't sure what the engraving was going to be. Normally I would have, wouldn't have even wasted my time uh, doing the repairs. Uh, this board was probably in the back room to get chopped up for kindling for the stove. Uh, but because this project is one that's donated, because this is going to be going to a, a wonderful group of young individuals in my hometown to help them raise money for graduation. I wanted to do the repairs and make this look as decent as I could. But all I had kicking around the back room at the time were a couple pieces of Douglas fir and one piece of white pine. The legs are foraged. The little slide-out drawer in the meat for the pegs and the playing cards, that'll be made out of scrap too. So I wanted to try to utilize my knots the best I could. All in all, I ended up hiding two of them very well, and this one didn't even come into play. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to show you in the CAD software, super quick, how to go in, how to get your nod holes in, and then how to pull a couple different engravings in and look to see how they themselves are going to look with the holes in place. Okay? So that was, that was pretty much the reason for doing these repairs last minute. One... You know, this is, this is the material that I had kicking around to work with. And uh, I also wanted to try to utilize the knots for something other than just a repair job, which it turned out, it turned out to be just a repair job. But we will show you nonetheless how it is these knots can come into play for other things, okay? All right, everybody, you hang on. We will be right back. We'll go jump down to the home office. We'll zip you up a quick video, and uh, we'll let you... Uh, We'll let you drop any uh, any of the defects in or anything that's that's worth note. Well, now you can see how it can look inside a cat, okay? You stay tuned. We will be right back, everyone.